sim. Sounds fancy. But I didn't have a clue what it was, and I can only assume because you're here, you don't know what it is too. Let's give you the lowdown. All phones, especially if you want to use your phone as a phone, require a SIM or subscriber identification module. Yep, a phone that can hold two different SIM cards at the same time is called a dual SIM device. And that by and large means your phone can use either of the two SIMs to make or receive phone calls. Yay, I think. Dual SIMs might not be for everyone, so I'm going to tell you the advantages and disadvantages of having a dual SIM phone, in the hopes that you can stop lying awake at night thinking of which one to buy. So, what are the advantages? For one, if you're a fancy businessy type person, you can tell I'm not one by the way I just said that, <laughs> you can have one number for your work and another number for your friends and family, all within the same phone. No more days of using your dual megaphone 4000 that you made one frustrated day. Secondly, dual SIMs are great for when you want to use one for phone calls and the other for connecting to the internet. Why is that good? Don't know, why is that good? Because some mobile operators have good voice plans but expensive data plans, or vice versa. On a dual SIM phone, you can combine two different plans from two different operators and get a cheaper bill. That is good. Thirdly, you can use two mobile phone providers at the same time so you can get more mobile coverage. That is if your phone isn't locked into a specific network. More information on locked networks in my other videos. And finally, if you travel abroad frequently, you can use one SIM in your home country and the other slot for SIM cards you buy in the countries you travel to. On the whole, that's what dual SIMs are good for. And if you're one of those people who wants something like that, go out and get one. However, before you go running out about to buy one, it is worth mentioning that dual SIMs come in different modes, and there's some caveats to go along with them. Oh yes, dual SIMming isn't as simple as you thought. Although I wish it was. Would be a lot shorter video. Would be a lot shorter video. Would be a lot sh would be a lot sh would be a lot shorter video. Let's go through the differences and little caveats that these dual SIM devices have. First off, we have single standby or passive. Older phones tend to use this technology and it's dual SIM tech at its most basic. Dual SIM passive means it's capable of having two different SIM cards, but only one of them can be active at any time. This means you have to manually swap back and forth activating your different SIMs. And when one SIM card works, the other is unreachable. Bit of a pain, right? Well, don't worry, because luckily there is also dual active. This allows you to make phone calls from both of the SIM cards and receive calls on either of the two SIM cards at the same time. This is because the SIM cards are permanently active. Eh? Okay, look, say for example, you're on a call about Ben's latest TikTok. Check it out. If you get another call on your second SIM, you get notified about it. And if you'd like to swap over, you can. These devices use two radio transceivers and where that sounds good, well, you'll probably get a shorter battery life because of it. And finally, you also have dual standby. This choice lets you have two active SIM cards, but they both use one radio transceiver. However, because they only use that one transceiver, the SIMs are both active only when you're not using them. Make sense? Let me give you another example. I'm going about my day filming another great TikTok, again right there, just, and I get a call on one of my SIMs. The other SIM in my phone then becomes inactive until that first card is no longer actively used. It's worth noting though that these dual standby phones usually use the micro SD slot for the second SIM, which means you can't use a micro SD card to extend your storage space. If you need a dual SIM phone and you're being swayed towards dual standby, spend a bit more money on a phone with extra storage space if you feel like that's something you need. And that's it. There you have your three types of dual SIM and what makes them tick. But to answer the question of, is it worth you getting a dual SIM phone? My answer is, I guess. They can be useful and phone companies have taken note of people wanting these devices. So much so, and here's the big reveal, that you can now have a tria SIM, trio SIM, tr tray SIM, Three SIMs, basically. And some phones, like the iPhone 11s and higher, even offer eSIMs, which are like virtual dual SIMs. Clearly, there's something to be had with it. But... 
as you've seen in this video, not all dual SIM devices work the same. Find which one is perfect for you and I'm sure you'll be happy calling your friends, wielding your dual SIM tech, talking about my next big TikTok video which will be uploaded on the- So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.